What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Scare Actor Appreciation Month. We've been on a grind this week. Today, we got Vincent. This year, he was on Ghost Town Streets, formerly on uh, Special Ops, though. Vincent, how was your season, buddy? It was fun. I, uh, it was definitely a learning year for me. Definitely. Um, I learned a lot with it being my first year on streets, and I'm ready to come back for next year. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, did you did your character really have, like, a name or anything, or...? So I had I had a whole backstory. I had a whole name for my character and everything. Um, unfortunately, like nothing, not to to my fault or anything. It didn't translate well. Um, so to to guess, I was just kind of, you know, townsperson number forty seven. Mm -hmm. Townsperson um, number forty seven. But like I I I did have a backstory and a name. Um, it just didn't didn't quite work out to where it was relevant. Not rebel. I can't speak. Uh, <laughs> prevalent to to the guests yeah um so it wasn't definitely yeah, it wasn't the orphan or it wasn't jackie's character the she-wolf yeah um it was oh hey you're a guy in a bowler hat <laughs> kind of bowler the bowler hat, hat guy the bowler hat well guy. do you mind talking us a little bit about like your backstory yeah so um originally when i went for my backstory uh have you guys seen tombstone yeah okay so i kind of envisioned my character as uh kind of like me um just kind of this person who does a little bit of everything um and who's actually part of the, the town fire brigade. I don't know if you guys had noticed or not, but there's no real a designated fire person for Calico. Yeah. Um, so I thought that it'd be kind of neat to introduce that that character to the town and to Ghost Town. Yeah. Um, to put my own spin on the little curse of Calico, um, we all know now Sarah Marshall was accused of uh, many things you know, that plagued the town, one of which being setting fire to the barn. Um, Again, to put my spin on that and to kind of enhance the story of, well, Sarah ne wasn't necessarily guilty of all these things, but she wasn't necessarily innocent either. Yeah. Um, I In life, I had a God complex, so I was very humble, very, you know, mild-mannered out in public, but secretly I, I craved this, this desire for power and for glory. So um, instead of Sarah setting, the fire, setting fire to the barn, I set the fire to the barn, in order to to put it out, so that I could be the hero, so that I could save, you know, the fire from or you know save the town yeah. from from being burned down. Um, unfortunately, I died in the fire. Um, and thinking about my character, I I kind of envisioned uh, a beam falling on me and trapping me, trapping my legs, so that I couldn't get out. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, I walked with a pretty heavy limp limp throughout yeah. the the run. Um, after it was funny after like the first weekend i like i actually started to walk with the limp i was like man like <laughs> i gotta get out of this um but yeah so that was that was kind of my story i died in the the barn house fire after starting it and then uh i was buried in boot hill and when sarah did her thing i did my thing resurrected <laughs> from the dead exactly um yeah we really uh, we've watched you a lot this year you had a gas can this year right was yeah. that was that to kind of further that kind of backstory yeah too? so actually um I know you guys are, are getting with Hostel. Hostel was, was my mentor this year, and uh, he asked me, he's like, well, why do you have that? And I'm like, I don't know, because it's scary. Mm -hmm. and I shake it, and people people pee themselves. Um, <laughs> he's like, well, try and you know work it into your character story. So um, after talking with him, I, I kind of envisioned that, you know, because I was out for power and out for you know, doing Sarah's bidding, is that I was kind of her, her soul collector. So I was out looking for souls, and I was... Kind of, I was kind of acting as a reaper. Mm -hmm. um, so my my thunder jug was my my box of souls that I was keeping, and each rattle was the soul was the soul being you know disturbed. Yeah, because I think one of the one of the scariest things at that event is of course the gas can. Yeah. I mean, you see these. You, you, I mean, you, you know, you fill those things up with God knows what. People probably put different stuff in them to get a, a different uh, sound, but. Yeah, I think when you utilize that as a scare, it's it's one of the it's it's a pretty good it's a really good scare, especially when people are not expecting it. Yeah. But then when you add stuff like that to the backstory of why you have it, like I think Judas was telling us the reason Merrick has his is because he's got like I think from I don't know for sure we'll ask him tomorrow, but it's supposed to be like his brother or something inside of the thing, and that's oh. when he when he when he hears the voices, that's who he's talking to or something like that. Okay. So that I mean that I'm not a hundred percent sure on that yet. I'll confirm tomorrow, yeah. but uh. Yeah, I mean, I, I always think when you incorporate something like that to the lore of your character, it really brings it to life. And yeah, seeing that this year with the limp, it really 
start, I would say is a good start to bring in the character to yeah. life because, um, like you said, it wasn't exactly 100% how you wanted it this year, but it's always a good start to, especially your first year being on yeah. streets, it's a good start to people like, okay, there's a guy with the bowler hat, let's see how that increases next year, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that was the thing with Judas, what he said last uh, with us last night, is that every year, characters are always developing yeah. more and more, so um, I could definitely see your character going more and more. I mean, this year you were you were <laughs> you're pretty scary this year though. I Thank mean, with the, with the whole the limp and everything. Like you see a guy limping at you and with the gas can and you just like, okay, that that's no good right there. It was it was funny too cuz I I can't tell you guys how many times a lot of my scares were just, "Oh shit, that's a monster." <laughs> like, cuz I, I I'm pretty tall, I'm pretty big, but I'm very quiet and I'm very stealthy. Yeah. And so I'm very good at just hanging out, you know, hanging behind people, just kind of chilling and then waiting for them to notice me or, you know, stalking someone down the street and having on, you know, oncoming traffic this way, go out, scare the, this person, you know, shake the can and then having the people in front of me jump and turn around like, oh, fuck, when, when did he get there? Yeah. yeah. So, um, it was very interesting. Uh, I don't know if you guys talked to, uh, Caleb this year, um, He's another he's another person on Ghost Town, um, but he was like, "Dude, I love your I love your walk," and I'm like, "Really? Why?" He's like, "I don't know. It, like, it looks like you're gonna fall. Like, it's like it it looks unsettling." And yeah. I'm like, "Thanks. I don't like it per se, <laughs> but I mean, it it got the job done. That was yeah. that was one thing about like this year is that um, for myself, I wasn't necessarily I wasn't not happy, but I wasn't like super thrilled with my performance. But I know." that I got I got the job done and that I was able to get scares and that, that was that was never really like a problem for me it was just more of like bringing my backstory to life so that everyone can know and everyone can see definitely yeah and like I said I mean next year I could see you coming in and you're gonna freaking kill it even more like you did this year man thank you so um actually we got a couple questions that uh we had people on Instagram okay. ask um the first one comes from daredevin29 he goes uh how did you come up uh, with your essential character? Like, did you just, like, were you sitting down thinking of ideas? Yeah, so, um, when I auditioned this year, I auditioned for, um, a prisoner role. And, um, because the the person who played the prisoner in Ghost Town, um, switched zones, he went to Carnival. Um, so the prisoner role was open. Um, so during my audition, I auditioned a prisoner, and when I got cast, um, I got cast as male gruesome, and so I don't, I don't know how casting works, but you're once you're cast in in a zone, you're basically in that zone. Yeah. Um, there are you know premier characters for each zone that have defined roles, such as the prisoner or the bride or uh, you know, the pig twins. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you get cast as the pig twins, you're going to be the pig twins. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was kind of cast as male gruesome. Uh, I was cast as male gruesome. So I was like, well, shit, like I didn't get what I wanted. But at the same time, I like the more I thought about it, the more I thought of, oh, you know, this c- can kind of be like a blessing in disguise because I'm not defined to this this role that's already, you know, big and prevalent and well known. Now I kind of have the chance to create something uh, for myself and to make make my own story and add it to to the, the lore of, of Ghost Town and Calico. Um, so like I said, I was just, I was just kind of well, I don't want to be, you know, just a spooky cowboy. I, I want to be something that kind of stands out, and I want to be something that that hasn't been done yet in Ghost Town. So, like I said, there had been no no real fire brigade type character, um, and then I was like, well, I'll do that, and uh, so I, I did that, and I thought about doing a badge or, you know, kind of. I was looking for for costume or you know uniforms of the era and there there really weren't any because you know in, in the 1880s 1890s it was just kind of everyday people who were you know there was the bucket brigade yeah so everyone everyone had a, a leather bucket in their house and when there was a fire they took it threw it out into the street and the bucket brigade would just use buckets yeah so that was i thought about using that as one of my one of my props this year um was you know kind of a, a old leather bucket and kind of walking around with it but then the more i thought about it i was like well this won't really do much other than just look like a leather bucket and I can't really scare with it. Mm-hmm. So I ended up scrapping that idea because I was like, well, there's no real way for me to, there's no real justification for me having this other than, well, it helps 
you know, define my character's look. Definitely. Um, speaking like of evolving, um, how how does your character, how has your character evolved from night one opening night to closing night? So, um, this year, I definitely started out a lot slower. So. The, one of the reasons I, I chose to walk with a limp is because first and foremost, my feet killed me after the first night. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was kind of, I was doing my little limp and then the next day I was like, man, I really have to walk like this. Like I, my feet, I had blisters, I had so many blisters on my feet and that was, that was lack of preparation on my part. But, um, so towards the beginning of the run, I was very slow and very, um, you know, just very old man like I got I got that a lot this year from guests um, but then towards the end of the run I was like you know I auditioned this this really aggressive character so I'm gonna try and be a little you know be a little faster be a little more angry with my my movements and stuff um, so when I went out there towards the middle of the run and um, I was you know I was I was mo taking longer strides and you know making bigger movements and I I really like that it, I think it, it brought forth a more like aggressive side to the character. Definitely. Um, and then toward the end, I was I was kind of somewhere in between. So on slower nights, I would slow myself down, and I would still be in character, and it would still go with you know what I was doing. But if you know there's a big group coming through Kmart or Marketplace, then I then because of of that aggressive side of my character, I could do those those quick little bouncing scares of. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you. All within three strides. Yeah. So, it was. It started off as out of necessity. Yeah. Um, and it turned into to more of a, a tool to to scare. Sounds good. Um, where was like your favorite area to scare at? In Ghost Town. Yeah. Um. Honestly, Calico Square. Um, and Calico Square is the area in front of the train station and uh, kind of right across Kitty Corner from the saloon. Yeah. Um, that was my favorite area to scare, and it was because people didn't expect monsters to be there. Definitely. They think, oh, cool, I just got out of Fog Alley, I just got out of Kmart, <laughs> there's no fog here. I know Carnival's that way, I know Forsaken Link's that way, there's no one gonna be, there's, you know, there's gonna be no one right here, and I was right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> I would, I would catch a lot of people off guard, uh, many beers were spilled there because of the the flinching reaction definitely but uh it w i loved the fact that it was open that there that there was some residual fog and that there was just people coming from every direction so you had a lot of opportunities for those quick bouncing scares because you could get people coming from you know from schoolhouse row from ghost town or you could get people coming from carnival or from the hanging from after as soon as the hanging ended that was my favorite spot to be because you get all those thousands of people coming from the hanging, walking right through you. Definitely. So that was probably my favorite place to scare. My second favorite place to scare would be, um, well, it's kind of like that whole area. So I love that area in front of the candy shop, and I love that area between uh, Kmart and the like the saloon. Yeah. So that was that that like that was that was my area. Definitely. It's really cool. You mentioned Hostel being your uh, your mentor, and he actually asked you one of the questions that we have today. He said, uh, "Which one was your best scare tactic? Uh, which one was your best scare tactics? Was it the Thunder Jug, Metal Gloves, or Sliding?" Oof. Um. I don't know. I think honestly, it was because because those are all all pretty no noise based scares with with the gloves I don't think you can you know just clicking in someone's face that isn't really scary it might it might get like a, oh shit what was that but like it's not <laughs> unless you're hostile just go yeah, and, yeah <laughs> you clap. but see even with the clap it's accompanied with that that movement too. Yeah. yeah so I think out of all those it would have to be the movement whether it be you going from high to low or you know quick side to side but honestly I think um, with the thunder jug, just because it was the loudest, a uh, uh, loudest tool that I had to use um, during this run. Mm -hmm. um, sliding is cool. I didn't get to slide a whole lot, and that was because it was my first year on streets. Yeah. Um, 
It's kind of like a. It's kind of like something. I've, what I've noticed is kind of like something you kind of gotta earn. You yeah. Know, like, so and they gotta build towards. I like. I hate. I hate porching, and like. So if you don't know what porching is, porching is just chilling out on the porch, waiting for someone to go going out, hitting a scare, hitting a slide or whatever, like going and then back. going back to the yeah. porch. So I hate. I hate doing that. If I when I'm when I'm sliding, I prefer to be out on the move, just you know, kind of like orphan and or just keep going. Yeah. Just I want to be able to keep going, slide, and then keep going. And yeah. be on my way. Um, so, like, because I hate porching, I hated running full speed, sliding, and then stopping. I Like, it's hard to describe, but if you've never slid before, I, I think that it's a lot easier to to be walking, go into your slide, and get up. Because I feel like you have a little bit more, more control. Um, also, you're not running, you know, full speed, or you're not hitting your full... Your, you know your maximum speed i think so, i've seen uh judas do that a couple of times this season where he just kind of does like a quick yeah. slide and then stands up and walks away so that's like uh i know i know orphan does that a lot too she'll she'll like to be on her hands and knees and she'll pounce and then get back up yeah and jackie too she'll pounce on the rabbit and then get back up yeah so it's that it's that quick little oh shit noise and we're you know talking about the elevation changes again it's high to low high mm -hmm. so um like sliding sliding is a good tool I, but I think that you need, and much like the, this is also another reason they don't have people do it their first year. It's a good, it's a good tool. It shouldn't be your only, your only scare. Yeah. You should be able to scare with your voice. You should be able to scare with your movements. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have to rely on sliding. Um, so sliding was a, was, it was a good, you know, tactic. Um, but I feel like the, the thunder jug provided the, the best kind of kind of scary because early on in the season i was even talking to hostel about it when i would do it i would shake it one direction and scare the other way yeah that way i can get the movement scare here and the noise scare here mm -hmm. i also told them with a the thunder jug it's cheating yeah. and i i've discussed this with other monsters it's, it's cheating it's you know you shake it and people in a 20 foot radius oh shit what was that yeah so it's definitely the easiest to get out of those i i think um but it's also like you have to you have to know how to hit it right too because if you you know you can hit it and it can rattle or you can hit it and it can boom like it it depends on how you hit it and how you move it it also depends on what's inside of it i also think it also depends on who's doing it too yes because it works with a lot like merrick for example it works with his character mm -hmm. just because when he's done talking to you Boom. That's it. You know, it's like that's what ends your interaction with him, and mm -hmm. he moves on. Where, um, you know, some people, like you said, some people use it just to get an easy kind of scare in, which for a lot of people, a lot of people are going to jump from that because of the yeah. noise. A lot of people are just, when they hear loud noises and they get scared. And it, it's not it's not a bad scare tactic. It's a good scare no, tactic. No, it's that's a very good scare tactic. That's why we're allowed tactic. to yeah. do it. Yeah. But I, like, I just think, like, it's, it's one of the ones that gets the easier scares. Mm -hmm. So it's like... You know, it's kind of like the going and clicking in someone's ears. It's, you know, it's a, it's not a it's not a cheap scare, but it but it is. It's yeah. a, oh shit, loud noise. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned like a lot of, uh, you mentioned sliding and stuff. Uh, you said you like in high school and stuff. You used to do a lot of sliding and stuff. What is your kind of preferred gear, per se, to like use for sliding and and do you utilize clacker gloves as too? Does that help a lot with? Because I've seen a lot of people have those with sliding. Does it give it more of the better effect for sliding? Yeah, so um, I'm not, you know, super expert on sliding. I did, I did used to slide at a high school at my uh, former high school. That was a long time ago, and again, that wasn't, you know, wasn't it not? So I like, to me, I kind like I kind of look at it as amateur hour, and then you know, knots is like pro the big leagues. It's yeah. professional. Um, so I. I use uh, Killer 187 pads, um, and the reason I use those was because when I when I first started getting into gear, I was told that that was the up and coming pad, that you know everyone used scabs, uh, you know, in the, before, but like these 187s were newer. There was a lot more padding. Um, yeah, I noticed now that they're one of the biggest pad companies out there now because we talked to a lot of scare actors, and that's the pads to go to now yeah, yeah. so like it it is kind of the the newer 
had to go to and like yeah, you you can talk to people i i ask people all the time you know who have used both paths i'm like well why do you use scabs or why do you use 187s um and like it it really is just a preference thing it's like the same thing with the clacker gloves um you know some people go fingerless some people have the the metal on their fingers some people will do just a, a steel square in their palm some people do washers some people do toe taps mm -hmm. it's it's all a preference thing um it depends on one how your knees are how your body is um because you can wear gaskets and you can wear the 187s with that extra cushion or you can just wear the 187s or you can wear the gaskets and the scabs or just wear scabs depends on how long you want to do it for and it depends on what your current you know kind of health is um, for me, I use the 187s because, like I said, that was what I was told. Hey, this is the this is the up and coming pad. I was like, cool. I want to be up and coming. I want, you know, I want, I want to do what the Nos Monsters are doing. But, you know, so I I went with the 187s. Um, I know if you talk to some of the people in Decay, they kind of have their preference. They say that one pad is, you know, easier for for stunt sliding, and one pad is easier for you know show sliding at at knots. Um, but it it really is just a preference thing. I think, you know, in terms of, of pricing, they're pretty similar. I think with the gloves, they can cost about $20 to make. So, like, it's not, you know, you're going to spend the same amount of money either way. Mm -hmm. So, it, it really is just a preference thing. Just whatever you feel kind of yeah, comfortable with. Yeah, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Yeah. I mean, the the scabs, like, their they're kneecaps, they're, they're longer, and the 187s are wider. Okay. So like I know Jackie went with with scabs because she said that they felt or she she felt that they more protected her her knee. Okay. Um I again I went with the 187s cuz I was told, "Hey, they're, they're last longer and they'll they're the they're yeah, the pad." I've been looking up some just to just to see price-wise and they're they're pretty reasonable price for as long as they last, especially with like stuff like sliding and stuff like that's what's gonna, you know, it's gonna kill them a lot. It's gonna do what, it, but they're meant to last a while. You yeah. Know? I mean, it, it depends on what kind of slides you do in the end, but um, I mean, because I've heard stories of people cracking their pads, yeah, while sliding and stuff like that. Oh, but. I I did that. I was a uh, I'm so like when when you do slide, you learn kind of which knee you're heavy on. Yeah. So I'm really heavy on my left on my left knee and my left foot. So my the leather gaiters that i wear to protect the tops of my feet and my ankles mm. the left buckle is gone like the left side is all scraped up <sighs> um my pads and everything are my left pad i actually cracked it and scraped away like the left left half of the pad so i took an old old pad that i you know, wasn't using anymore the or the the cap rather and i cut it and i you know i plastic welded it together so it's on together right now but you know they you will go through your taps yeah and that's that's the good thing about the the 187s is um with scabs you have to buy the the recaps and put them over the the hard plastic that's already on the scabs with the 187s that you can just interchange them real quick um so you only need knee pad cap rather than knee pad cap cap oh nice yeah. so it's it's something where you can kind of just change them yeah, and then, like you don't have to spend money to buy a whole new. You just have to buy the the caps and exactly, stuff, right? which is a lot cheaper usually because usually the knee, like the whole strap will still be good. It's just the cap you got to replace, mm -hmm. and, which I think is cool. Um, so a, 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 another good question we've been asking a lot of these characters this season uh, is the fact that you have to get into that mental preparation uh, going out there. You know whether it's you know doing something you do that's just kind of your tradition listening to music you know there's some people that just sit in silence and wait for the event to start there's just people that just pump each other up what is your kind of method of getting into that character before going out do you like listen to metal rap do you like do you talk with people do you pump each other up do you just sit there in silence and get in character like what do you do so on my way to two knots i will listen to music um or a podcast it it kind of depends on how I'm feeling. If I want to get like super pumped, I'll just put on Ghost and I'll listen to Ghost like nice. for just the entirety of the ride. Um, if I want to, you know, interchange it a little bit, I'll listen to some hip hop. I listen to pretty much everything, mm -hmm. but like I'll listen to hip hop, I'll listen to metal and rock, and you know, just kind of get pumped. 
Um, once I get two knots, though, it's like it, it's different. I stop listening to music and I just I'm I'm there. I'm mm-hmm. at the event. I'm with my friends. I'm with my coworkers. Let's go do this. Um, when it comes time to putting on the show, um, this year for Ghost Town, it was it was a little bit different for me. Last year um, for Infected, uh, I was one of the squad leaders, <clears throat> and it was it was a little different because with when you're a squad leader, it's a uh, it's very much, you're you're there to work, but you're also there to have fun. Yeah, and I mean it. It's like that for for any you know any zone or maze in the event. You're there to work. You're there to have fun. For the squad leaders, though, I don't know. It was it was just different. So it was a lot of joking around. It was very jovial, very light. But then, you know, once it was time to put on show, it was very serious and very. You guys are in a fucking zombie apocalypse. How are you going to get out of this? Yeah. yeah. Well, but like, but still throwing in those those little light you know light hearted moments and. But staying in character and keeping like, the story moving. Like riding a gun like Fortnite. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Um, but, like, so for Ghost Town, though, it was different. I Going out there, I was just kind of like, holy fuck, like, I'm on Ghost Town. Like, yeah. This is, this is, like, the one that started it all. Um, before I went, like, out to the streets, I was just kind of, like, hanging around, just... You know, all right, guys, let's let's go let's go to work. Let's go scare some people. <laughs> um, so, like for me, there wasn't like a, a super, you know, super complicated process of like getting in the moment. It was just all right. Listen to my music on the way to work. Once I'm at work, all right, let's go to work. Yep. It was very, you know, straightforward and and all right, cool, let's go. Um, I know, like like uh, some people, they will listen to music up until they have to be out on stage. Um, other people will go off to the side and you know hype themselves up and scream yell at themselves or play air guitar or whatever <laughs> but like um for me i was i'm very kind of reserved and just very kind of quiet and all right cool let's go let's let's go do this thing let's go have fun yeah exactly you, you mentioned you a little bit of the time um on special ops um as well as obviously you've done ghost town streets this past year uh, what would you say was the biggest difference and biggest like learning curve to going out in the streets from the mazes so from the main so coming from infected to streets it's different but it's not as different as coming from any other maze and the reason for that is this is when you're in special ops infected you are in the modern day city of calico that is being overrun by a zombie infestation yeah so the second that you step you know step out of the the debriefing room and out onto the streets of calico you are in calico you are in a world yeah. And it was the it was kind of the same thing when when infected was over in camp, yeah. is, um, you know you're you're in the zombie apocalypse, yeah. so your world is three sixty. Now, when you're coming from a world that is three sixty, going out onto streets, which also happens to be a world that is three sixty, it's a little bit of an easier transition. So for infected, you, they are I will say this they are the hardest working maze or zone or whatever that not has period has ever done um they are the hardest working monsters and talent and black owls line control from top to bottom they are the hardest working operation at knots yeah um and it is because they are in this world that is 360 degrees yeah. um out on the streets you're also in a 360 degree world but there's also shadows for you to dip into yeah for special ops, if you're a zombie out in the middle of Alpha Streets, you're out in the middle of Alpha Streets. There's yeah. no hiding out there. Yeah. You're a zombie. You have to get the guests. And the guests are coming every you know, fifteen to twenty seconds. Yeah. There is zero downtime in yeah. that maze. For you know, being out on the streets, you can go, you know Take a breather. Yeah, yeah. take a breather. You you can go, you know, dip into a shadowy corner and, and stalk someone or just kinda of post up and stare at someone and, you know, creep them out like that. Um, whereas infected you're constantly going on stop. Um, as for the other mazes, like I said, you're kind of, it's more of a, it's more of a 2D scare. It's more of a, rawr, all right, I'm back. Wait, wait for the next group. Rawr, I'm back. Wait for yeah. the next group. Um, so I think that Infected definitely preps you a lot better for street zones. Um, as for, as for mazes though, I mean, everyone in the mazes, they're super talented. They're, they're there for a reason, right? Definitely. So, like, you, you have to have some talent to scare. Um, as far as transitioning from, I don't know, say Pumpkin Eater to, to Street Zone or whatever, I think that um, the biggest thing that anyone in a maze can do 
is work on you know staying in character all the time and work on you know kind of taking in their entire environment and their entire surroundings and just go um but yeah i, th I think that that like this year for me transitioning from infected to ghost town it was it was still a big leap but it wasn't as big as a leap as it could have been definitely um this is a, another fan question we got um while on the streets has anyone accidentally scared you no um not to <laughs> there have been a couple people a couple monsters who have tried this year though and they didn't do it on purpose it goes back to me saying a lot of people thought that i was a guest yeah. And it was just how quiet and the way that I was walking was. Um, it happened at least three times where once I was on, actually twice on Fog Alley, I was stalking behind these people and these these other fellow monsters would come up and they'd go to scare me and they'd be like, oh shit, you're a monster. And then they'd just kind of like walk away with like the semi-defeated look and kind of like a, hey, sorry, I didn't mean to do that to you. Um, as for guests, however, though, they always try and scare us. and. Yeah. I'm gonna say this. It's really annoying. No, like, definitely. I, I think it's completely annoying. It's. I don't understand like why why a guest will pay money to an event to get scared and then try and scare the actors or other people. Yeah. Like, I get it if you know if you're with your friends or whatever and you want to freak them out real quick, but don't you know don't go running up to random strangers and yelling in their face or trying to yeah. scare them or whatever. Like that's that's our job as monsters. Definitely, I, I agree. I agree with that 100%. That was one of my... There was two things that were my pet peeves. Turn your damn flashlight off. Yep. Yeah. And don't try to scare the actors. They're there for a reason. They get paid to do the scary. Let yeah. them do the scary. Yeah. And it's like... That's what they're there for, to give you that experience. Yeah. Um, another another uh, question we've been getting... Uh, we got... An, uh, it's a pretty good one is... Um, if you had the opportunity to go to any other event just for one day to, to do some scary acting, what event would you go to? And why? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um... Well, because I'm only kind of familiar with the events in like in Southern California, I'd have to say Queen Mary. And the reason I say Queen Mary is because, um, like Six Flags, just geologically, it's a little too far, oh, yeah. far of a drive for me. It's I know like, it is for you guys. It's like a two-hour drive. Man. Um, and then Universal, it's so that was actually weird. So, um, because I live I live in Arcadia, um, which is it happens to be. The exact like midpoint from Universal or not. Definitely. So two years ago, when I when I decided that I wanted to do this, you know, professionally, um, I had to make a choice either Universal or Knotts, and I had always wanted to work at Knotts, so I ended up going with Knotts. Um, but I was thinking about Universal, and I was kind of weighing the pros and cons of Universal or Knotts, and I had kind of settled on Universal being, well, Universal. Um, they have a lot of IPs. There's not a whole lot of you know, original content coming out of there. Yeah. And um, having been to Knotts and Universal as a guest, to to me, there's their street zones, like it it didn't compare to Knotts. Definitely, I like, I, 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 I can agree with that statement. And you know, it's not knocking the talent at Universal or anything. I just think that Knotts is so immersive with everything that they do that it's hard to you know to choose otherwise and just be like, holy shit, like I'm not. You know, how am I not, you know, living in, in Caligo right now? Like, yeah, and especially with this year, too, because I felt with this year that with the whole lore of the Sarah Marshall thing, it's kind of slowly, they're finally tying everything together, and mm -hmm. you're kind of seeing more of the backstory of this Green Witch, who's been an icon of the event for years and years and years, and now they're finally giving her an origin story, which I thought was really cool. And then to tie that in with, of course, the Ghost Town, you know, Street Scare Zone and The Hanging which is expanding the lore even more of this, mm -hmm. you know, story. And then from what I've been hearing, which I didn't see firsthand, I should have paid more attention into that maze, but in Origins there was little hints and Easter eggs of it tying into other scare zones. Yes. Like Carnival and the Hollows and Forsaken Lake. Like I thought that was even more of an expanding to the lore and I think that's a, a good idea. You don't see that a lot with other Events. Yeah, events. events. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, LA Haunted Hayride did it this year, and that's because, you know, Plague and all them, you know, they came in and they worked their magic, and yeah. they had this essential lore of this fictional city who was trapped in Halloween, uh, Midnight Falls, and they had this fictional city, and they had all this, you know, all these characters interacting with everybody. 
You don't see that with Horror Nights, though. Horror Nights, of course, they have an essential theme of what they're going to do, mm -hmm. of, like, the whole event's going to be 80s themed. But there's no, like, tie-ins to everything. And that's why I like events like Knots and Queen Mary and, um, you know, I, even this year, Haunted Hayride, because of the interactiveness of everybody and the story it tells. Like, every time you go back, you learn more and more mm -hmm. than you, you originally knew. And that's how I felt with Knots, is every time I, go, I went back, I learned something new from the characters that I was paying attention to. Exactly. Which is really cool. And going back to, I forget who asked it, but uh, if, I, if I did have have to scare anywhere other than odds i would probably go to queen mary mm -hmm. um just because like you said it does kind of have that that immersiveness and, and interactiveness of you know the storytelling of that that knots has um you know they have they have their story with why all the all the sliders are clowns and how they recruit new you know new clowns and mm -hmm. you know just the the history of the queen mary like that's that's something that they they I, capitalize exactly. on. Exactly, and I, I think that's why, you know, a lot of people flock to the Queen Mary and they find it so scary. Well, it's because, yeah, no shit. It's actually haunted. Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> and that's what I think made the mazes a lot scarier for me in the Queen Mary. This is the first year I ever went to the Queen Mary. Mm -hmm. And what made the mazes scarier is not only are they really dimly lit and, like, you can barely see shit as you walk through, and then, of course, you got the scare actors, but the fact of the matter is, you know that that ship's haunted, and you don't know if you're walking down those hallways that are haunted or not. Exactly. Um, needless to say, I mean, every five fucking minutes in that maze, I'd hit my head on something because I was fucking too tall. Yep. But, um, I, yep, I, I feel you there. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, and yeah, I mean, that was pretty horrifying, the fact that I could have had a concussion. But <laughs> uh, but, the, but the fact that you know that the ship's the ship's history, and, you know, they, they utilize that, and they capitalize that with the event of the essential lore of... You have Scary Mary, you got the chef, you got freaking the captain, you got the ringmaster, you mm -hmm. got freaking, you know, all these different uh, icons of the event, and they utilize them, and they tie them into the lore of the Queen Mary, which I think is is really awesome. You know, you got the B-340s, you know, you mm -hmm. know, one of the most famous rooms on the Queen Mary because of its, you know, how haunted it is. Um, they really take a lot of these real-life stories, and they bring them to life in their own kind of story but they just twist them up a little bit to make them a little bit more fictional yeah but at the same time they're based on true events which i think is really cool um speaking of scares we talked about how queen mary had some good scares mm -hmm. what was your favorite scare you had this year oh this year that's a tough one or, or there are a couple you know if you have just a couple of them um I mean, it's always fun when you make someone pee oh um, what <laughs> okay that's that's a new for the podcast this month oh yeah so like i don't you know, I, if you ask Ruth, she'll tell you the same thing. Or ask, ask any monster. People have this. I don't, I don't know why, but they just have this need to tell you when they have peed themselves. Yeah. So, it happened three times this year. I went for a scare, and it was either, "Holy shit, I just peed," or "You just made me pee." Like, <laughs> it. I don't know why people feel compelled to tell us monsters, but like. <laughs> Because all we do is we laugh at you, and yeah. we go back and you know we tell these stories. I made someone pee, and they told like they told me about it. Yeah. Um, so it's always fun making someone pee. Um, it's fun making someone drop their fourteen dollar beers. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the best one we've seen with that was uh, with Sinatra, and uh, he was he was right there by the saloon, and some girl had a beer, and he scared her, and she goes. You made me spill my beer, and then he looked at her and go, "I didn't make you do anything." Exactly, <laughs> and that, that's the thing is, you know, they'll, "Hey, you made me drop this." I'm like, "I'm not the one holding your cup. I like, didn't make you do anything. I, I scared you, you. I scared you, and you threw your hands up in the but air." But that's all, and how you control it, man. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, "Hey, ball security is job security. You know, keep that thing tight." <laughs> my, uh, I think my favorite scares are just the scares that make, make you the monster laugh and make the people laugh. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's. You know that's what it is. That's kind of how knots started. Is they want they want to scare you, but they also want to make you feel good. They, yeah. We're here to entertain you guys. Yeah. And you know we're entertaining you by scaring you, but we want to make you have a good time because we want you to come back. Definitely. So if you can if you can, and I think this kind of depends on the person too. If you can get scared, look back on it and laugh at yourself, I think that you're going to come back 100% of the time. Yeah. Because as long as you're having a good time, that means I'm doing my job. And you're gonna come back. And how do you like to be? Do you like when the guest tells you they're scared of you? Is it the reaction that makes you makes you feel appreciated, or when another monster tells you, "Hey, that was a really good scare." It's it's all of them. All of them make all of them make you feel good because if you can if you can hit a scare and you can floor someone, if 
if you can floor an entire group with one with one you know quick little scare quick little movement that's the greatest feeling in the world yeah if you can scare someone and then they start laughing or like someone in their group is laughing like oh man he really got you i think one of my favorite scares this year is like the whole the whole tough guy of oh yeah you guys can't scare me or they'll try and scare me and then I'll just turn around and I'll scare him right back real quick and then they'll you know they'll flinch and they'll get scared and I'm like dude what are you doing yeah. <laughs> like you just pull this whole tough guy act and I just it was that it was like it was yeah um, yeah I mean that and that's that's one of the essential reasons why we asked you to be on the show was because we just appreciate all that you do as a scare actor we appreciate all that you guys do as a team. Um, because in the end of the day, this we and we said we're gonna probably be saying it a lot this season. This is not an easy job to do. Oh yeah, no. This that's... is a very. Uh, it takes a lot of time out of your season. That it takes up your weekends. Your you know your your mm -hmm. Friday nights, your Saturday nights that you want to go. Usually, you probably either I don't know what you do. I mean, you can either go hanging out with friends. You can just be at home lazy, or mm -hmm. you got stuff you got you you know you got to do. And it's one of those things where it takes time out of your weekends, your your plans and everything, and everything is just at a, at a halt because of this season. And we thank you for coming in week after week every season uh, to put on one of the greatest damn shows in the world. I am going to say that personally. Definitely. Because I, I would agree. It's, thank you guys. It's, it's something that you don't see everywhere, you know? I mean, like, we... <laughs> We would go to Knots one week and then Horror Nights the next week, uh -huh. and there was just something where I'd look over at Sammy and be like, "Dude, this isn't the same. I fucking yeah. I just want to go back to Knots." Yeah. It was like something where I was just like, "There's no sliders here. We don't know anyone here, so yeah. this is kind of whack, you know." I mean, we would only go meet up with friends there that were going to the event, but we didn't really know any per se scare actor talent there. So I mean. For us, I think when we know people and we get to like watch them work, mm -hmm. it, it makes it a better experience for at least me and Sammy because we can literally just sit on it. And this is literally what we did most of the season. We can sit on a bench, watch people work, and then laugh. And then later on throughout the night or the next day, I'll shoot him a text being like, dude, you had us dying. You did a fucking a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, example of that was, and I said it last podcast, I would text Jackie every every weekend. We'd have We had this thing where we would text each other how she was doing as a character because she would always want feedback as to what she can do better um how she can improve it and she i never gave her any feedback she always just killed it out there and she found ways how to improve her character week after week mm -hmm. i could see that a lot with you too there was ways where you can uh utilize you said you were very stealthy i saw that um uh, one of my favorite scares that you did this season actually was in front of the undertaker um boot hill uh, where they make the coffins, you would go hide in the coffin and oh, yeah. go run out to scare people, which I thought was was pretty funny. Um, because a lot of people sometimes like to go take a picture of that coffin. They won't see you because one, you were dressed in all black too. Yeah, I was the the color scheme that I was is in light. I had on three different colors, um, but in the dark, it was very it was very monotone and very. I blended in to a lot of things very well. Yeah. Um, so I was very hard to see, um, which again helps with the, the whole stealthy thing but yeah like um hiding in those shadows and you know popping out real quick and then running to either another spot or just you know getting lost in the crowd that that definitely helps a lot just definitely, in terms yeah. of you know that's because that's another tool that you can add to your your arsenal is mm -hmm. you know do you want to be seen do you want to be you know heard or do you want to be you know be a little more more sly about it and kind of hang back and, and then move in for the the, the scare yeah, um, but yeah, we've we've loved just watching everyone work this season as a team and just bringing this event to life for me and Sammy just to kind of watch week after week, uh, just to see everyone having a good time, um, even putting up with the nights where the guests weren't as uh, as great. Yeah, speaking on that, um, uh, thank you a lot. How do you how do you deal with those difficult people, and how do you keep your composure? Um, so it's. It depends on the person. I think you have to have thick skin. You can't you can't be you know super hot headed because you know th that is kind of of one of the things that we that we as is you know talent have to put up with is yeah we know that we're probably gonna get cussed at that we're that we're probably gonna get pushed and shoved and grabbed and but we kind we kind of accept that we're like all right well we love we love doing what we're doing so we're you know we're doing it because we love it so we 
like for me, I just kind of shake it off and, but like, like to myself, Mm -hmm. obviously I'm never going to break character and I'm never going to, you know, jeopardize my, my job at, at Scary Farm. One, because I love it. And two, because that's just not the type, type of person I am. Yeah. Um, as far as if, you know, if, of being shoved or grabbed or whatever, um, Luckily, the the few times that I was, I'd happen to be right by, you know, either security or my cast leads, and I would just be like, "Hey, get this person!" Like, they they touched me, they were cussing at me, they're they're impeding my job, the yeah. ability to perform my job. Um, it's, I mean, it's not easy. I mean, you you do have to deal with just assholes constantly all night, and some nights are are way better than others and some nights are just like dude i don't even want to go back out there right now yeah um i think i think probably the most annoying thing for me is uh when guests would try and scare me and they would like hit me because they like people don't don't know how to scare without touching or whatever so like the towards the end of the run um kind of put me in like a really bad mood for the rest of the night 10 minutes after we open this drunk lady and her friend walk up to me with their phone, like recording me. Um, they just went and they shoved it in my face and they like, they hit me in my face and I was just like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like what, like, why are you going to come here and and do that? I mean, one, why are you going to drink to the point that you, you know, you're acting stupid that, I mean, cause a- anyone who drinks hopefully is all, or they're all adults. Yeah. They're all of age. They're all, they should be responsible with, with their drinking. Especially if you're going to an event like this, because I feel like with an event like this, you need to be responsible with what you drink and stuff, because you, you are in the presence of live actors. There's a liability where, you know, you can hurt yourself, obviously, but you can also put the actors in danger, too, because it's like, you know, you guys are out there just doing your job, and it makes it kind of harder when someone's drunk and they kind of come up to you and they try to, you know, keep bothering you and bothering you, but... You know, you're trying to just do your job in the end of the day, you know? And I don't think that guests realize that. And I I can't tell you how many times that I've overheard this this season. Well, I paid this amount of money so I can do whatever I want to them. It's like, I've no, that, you can't. I've heard that from multiple people, it's, too. It's like, we're people. You know, if you if you grope me or you assault me, that's that's a criminal, you know, offense. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can't just do that because you paid $60. That's hey. not, that's not what you signed up for. That's sure as hell isn't what I signed up for. That's what Carly said, too. She, she was saying that a lot of people just forget that you guys are human. Mm-hmm. That they just think, oh, well, they're a monster. I can, you know, I can do whatever I want. No, you can't. You, you pay to go essentially watch a horror movie be brought to life. Mm-hmm. You're, you go and you pay to be entertained. Yeah. And, our job is to entertain you, you know. It, you know, you don't you don't go to the movie theaters and you know buy popcorn and then cuss out the person just for shits and giggles. Yeah. You know, like, you know, it. But we, it's we like, are human, and we we do have a job to do, and I I get you know that that can kind of be lost because, going back to the whole you know immersiveness of it is yeah we're in this world we are we are monsters when we're out there mm-hmm. you know, hostile is hostile when he is out on oh, stage. Yeah. Um, so like it, I I understand how it can be easy to forget, but at the same time, you as a guest have the responsibility to you know, not be a dumbass. Mm-hmm. I for sure, yeah. It's just one of those things where uh, we've seen that a lot this season, and it really got it really got annoying on my part. Um, of course, you have uh, babysitting Friday and Saturday nights um, because it, it seems like a lot of parents like to uh, drop off their kids. Mm-hmm. And then have a date night on their own, or just want to be alone without the kids for a Friday, Saturday night. Those are those are the Friday nights of nuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I mean, it just got to a point where you know, kids think they're all shits and giggles mm-hmm. and stuff. And I never, I I even remember as a kid, I don't even remember doing that. Like, if someone scared me, I either got scared or I'm like, oh, dude, you got me. That was pretty good. Yeah, you that's, know, that's how I am. Like, if if I do happen to be walking through somewhere, or you know, someone scares me, I I I laugh it off because I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I did not see you. Like, you got me. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was a good one. And, like, unfortunately, not everyone has that attitude to being scared. One thing I do kind of regret, but at the same time, I don't regret it, is uh, since we met so many people, they kind of knew us, and a lot of them never try to, like, really scare us mm-hmm. unless they really caught us off guard. 
And there was just some nights where I was like, all right, dude, can you, like, slide in front of me? Or like, I want to just <laughs> see that happen in front of me. Like, but no, because they knew it. But, uh, again, I, I wasn't mad, like, about it, but it was, like, something I wish that I could have saw more. But um, it was one of those things where uh, I was kind of fortunate to, like, meet a lot of people because when we, when we, when we first started, we're thinking and trying to build of how we were going to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. We were, you know, we had, we already had four guests in mind. Of course we had Bree, uh, Jackie and Ruth and then, uh, Alicia. Mm -hmm. Um, and we knew that that was going to be like the four, but at, then we thought about it more. We're like, if we're going to do a character appreciation month, we need to have a lot of characters. We need to get to know these characters. We need to, we need to really show our face around. And that's where I think ghost town, it really, that's where it really happened because night after night we'd go hang out in Ghost Town. A lot of these people started seeing who we were and then a lot of people started seeing where we hung out. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they would interact with us in character, which I thought was cool. And then, you know, they found us on social media mm -hmm. and they started talking with us over social media. And then, you know, one thing led to another. We started booking a lot of people. We eventually started showing our faces in other scare zones uh, to see uh, if they would want it, if they were interested in it. Mm -hmm. Social media again, they they find us on social media through other people, and we started booking and booking even other events and stuff. But Knotts was like the place we were gonna. We really, when we thought about it, which was we wanted a lot of the characters from Knotts, mm -hmm. just strictly due to the fact that we had a lot of interaction with a lot yeah. of these people. We got to know these characters. And then even outside of Scary Farm, we got to know them a little bit as people mm -hmm. who were fucking, when you really come and see it, they're all down-to-earth fucking cool people. Yeah. They, there's a lot of fucking cool people out there. Like, you know, you see them as one character in, in the streets, but then when they're done, when it's all said and done, they're fucking all just chill people, mm -hmm. which I, I think is awesome. And that's why we're doing Character Appreciation Month, just to show how much you guys, you know, like, nothing doesn't go unnoticed. We notice everything. We want to hear the stories. We want to. We want to just say thanks for all you, what you guys done. Help bring this lore to life, and just overall, like I said, make Fist one of the greatest fucking events in the world. I hands down. I cannot. Thank you. Cannot stress that even more. Um, Vincent, before we sign off, is there anything you would like to plug in? Anything you want to say to the audience about just your overall being a scare actor and final words, man? Um. It's fun. I think more more people should do it. Um, it's not the easiest job in the world, but it's. I think that it's definitely one of the most rewarding because if you love what you're doing, then it's not work to you. It's just, it's having fun with your friends and scaring people. It's uh, it's definitely nice to feel, you know, to get this appreciation. So I thank you guys for that. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely glad that. You know, you guys were able to to go to not so many nights and enjoy, you know, just the show that that we put on, and um, it, I think that it it does just kind of show, you know, that that all the work that not only us as talent put in, but you know, the the carpenters, the lighting techs, the cast everybody. leads, blackouts, line control, costume, security, costume, makeup, makeup, everybody, makeup, yeah, everyone, just from top to bottom, it's showing, you know, how well it can come together and just how much joy and excitement that it provides to to people every every year yeah there's no doubt even even the people that you don't see on stage behind the scenes who put you know help are putting together this event like they just they deserve just as much thanks as you guys because like you said without them you know without this whole team effort none of this happens mm -hmm. you know you got your lighting effects you got your sound effects of course you got the costuming you got the makeup you got, you know, all the people who build the mazes, all the people who, you know, creatively write them and draw them out and mm -hmm. all the research and everything that goes into this from pre-production all the way to opening day. They start work right after the event ends exactly. in 2019. As, as, as soon as the last night of Hana is over. The next day, they're already working on 2020. Exactly. Yeah, dude. So they work year round to get another event out and... In the in the in the horror industry, there's a there's a great saying: "Horror never sleeps." This is exactly true. Um, and I know a lot of the scare actors are already trying to develop new things so that they can bring to the table for next year. Mm -hmm. um, something that they probably tested the waters a little bit, like on the final nights, and then they're like, "Okay, that's something we can utilize for next year." Mm -hmm. You know, there's already ideas going around in people's heads of how they can improve characters and how they can add to the lore of their character, which 
is freaking awesome because that really shows how um, how much work goes into this event. I can promise you this: as long as there's an event like this, people like us, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep hopefully doing this every year, Scarecrow Appreciation yeah, Month. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and of course you're gonna be welcome back. Oh, thank um, you guys. Just and we can't wait to see what you bring out for next year um, because again this year it was a very good start year for you thank you and usually you know people who start off in streets like for the first year sometimes they don't you know they, they they're a little shy because you know they're still trying to figure everything out it's like you said it's a different translation from going into a maze into streets um, and I think both of them we work very hard in mazes and streets there's there's a, there's a respect for all scare actors and everything and um, we we're just excited to get, fortunate enough to get even people from mazes to come onto this show too. So that's gonna yeah. be really fun. Um, but again, Vincent, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you guys and for having me. Thank you for doing what you do night after night on Haunt Season. We really appreciate it. Um, really appreciate you helping bring the story of uh, not scary farm to life. Uh, if you guys are interested in more of uh, some scare actor appreciation month stories. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the month. We have a lot more people coming on. If you guys want to see other stories that are already up, definitely go check those out. There's a lot of great people on that you want to you want to check out, including Vincent. I mean, if you've already if you've made it this far, you've already heard all of his stuff. Then yeah. um, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Uh, if you guys want to uh, interact and stuff, uh, follow us on Twitter at Nights of Horror and on Instagram at The Nights of Horror. Where on Instagram we actually had a lot of great videos put out this uh, past season just because the music that I wanted to use would have been copywritten on YouTube so I, I put it on Instagram because I felt like the music that I used for each Tribute Age compilation was perfect um, the way I saw it but definitely go check those out and uh, follow us like I said on all our social medias and if you're feeling extra generous make sure to uh, become a Patreon on Patreon um, you know we have a bunch of tiers that you can follow so thank you very much uh, Vincent, again, thank you so much, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.